investors in emerging markets are shifting to stocks from bonds as they prepare for the world after monetary tightening. There are early signs of a rotation underway with equity benchmarks beating local currency bonds since the beginning of July. And traders are already starting to chase the rally with Bank of America Corporation reporting that emerging market equities have absorbed $4.1 billion in the week to August 2, adding to inflows in the previous three weeks. Uh, it all points to evidence uh, that local currency bonds, uh, which have been the standout trade in, uh, in emerging markets this year, uh, are now facing tougher competition from stocks, uh, while investors, including Bank Julius Bayer and & Co. and, and Brazil's uh, legacy capital, uh, argue that there is uh, still uh, money to be made in debt markets, uh, bigger gains will come from stocks. Uh, the macro backdrop is also tilting in favor of developing nations. Uh, emerging economies are expected to expand almost three percentage points quicker than advanced nations over the next three years, uh, led by China, albeit at a slower pace in India. Analysts have raised their forecast for earnings uh, in July at the fastest clip in 18 months, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Uh, the main drivers for equity performance will be a benign macro environment, especially in um, countries like India, Indonesia, and Brazil, along with strong earnings growth driven by strength in the consumption and investment, said Ashish Chug, a money manager at Luma Sales and Company in Boston. The MSCI Emerging Markets Index rallied almost 6% last month, the best performance since January. In contrast, indexes of dollar in local currency EM debt gained less than 2%. Emerging market assets broadly saw a 5.5% spike in capital inflows in July, the biggest since November. Investors in U.S. exchange-traded funds have poured a net $2.61 billion in emerging stock ETFs in the past four weeks, while allocating just $269 million to bond equivalents. That may just be the start. Uh, because a 5.7 trillion sell-off last year has left emerging market equities under owned by global investors by some $600 billion, according to GWNK Investment for Management. Meanwhile, money managers in the U.S. have parked about $2.5 trillion in cash. Confidence about the economic rebound is bringing some of that capital back into developing nation equities. If we really have seen a peak in U.S. rates, and equities and the smaller, more distressed parts of EM should do well as foreign capital revisits. Examples are Egypt, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Turkey, said Hasnaid Malik, a strategist at Telemur in Dubai. If we see a soft landing in the U.S. that favors larger emerging markets like China, Taiwan, and South Korea because of their dependence on the manufacturing and export sectors. In some emerging markets, investors are drawn to stocks because they offer potential returns far above bonds. Uh, for instance, China's CSI 300 index trades uh, at an earnings yield that would projected profits expressed uh, a percentage of stock prices of 8.6%. Uh, uh, Chinese bonds offer 2.6%. That gap has doubled in the past two years. Even as China faces headwinds uh, with data flashing warnings, uh, signs across the economy, uh, some investors are undeterred. Um, and uh, half of our portfolio is in China, said Nuno Fernandez, a New York-based money manager at GWMK Investment Management. India is the second most important country for us. The high valuations there hold us back and earning more. But our hope is India lags a bit, and that will be our opportunity. Investors particularly like Latin American stocks, some of which are both cheap and benefiting from monetary easing. Brazil's benchmark trades at a 25% discount to its average valuation of the past 10 years. According to data compiled by Bloomberg, and policymakers have just delivered a bigger than forecast rate cut. Chile stocks offer a 27% discount, and it is keeping even Brazil to the rate cut post. Uh, a legacy capital, which oversees $28 billion, REI's $582 million, has cut some fixed income positions in Chile and started to build bullish positions in Brazilian stocks. Uh, Bank Julius Baer favored equities in both those countries over Mexico.
we see outperformance potential for Latin American stocks that benefit from a weaker dollar, rate cuts, and an improvement in China sentiment, said Ninad Dinik, an equity strategist at a Julius Bayer in Zurich. Uh, China is bracing for a big week of data uh, with uh, releases showcasing extended deflation uh, and expected slowdown in credit growth and trade shrinking further. Uh, with economists' projections for uh, for a stalled recovery, volatility could increase in both Chinese assets and those of commodity exporting nations. Uh, Egypt will publish its July inflation figures after unexpectedly raising rates last week to contain consumer price growth hovering around 36%. Traders will, will parse the data to assess the probability of another currency devaluation. The Reserve Bank of India will announce its interest rate decision, as well as banks' reserve requirements. Uh, the country, uh, which has prioritized fiscal prudence in recent years, was circumspect in raising rates and is expected to be circumspect and easy. In Mexico, Bank Seco may hold its benchmark rate for the third successive meeting as policymakers strike a balance between tight monetary conditions and stubborn inflation expectations. A slew of data releases is due from Turkey, including a projected contraction in industrial output. The data, however, will precede uh, some of the policy changes that it did investors. Hope the nation will return to economic orthodoxy.